Hey, what's up, guys? This is Taylor. Today is Tuesday, the 28th of February, and I'm doing the free video here for tonight. So we'll jump in and get ready for tomorrow. And I'm thinking the market's are in a pretty vulnerable spot here, guys. So if the uh, if the bulls don't fight and scratch and claw, we could be in for a pretty big flush, um, potentially. So here's what I'm seeing. We had the big rally that started back here in early January. So the bulls came out screaming this year. And now on this most recent flush, we've pretty much given back all that progress. So any progress they made in the structure of the charts, any progress they made in the momentum, they gave all that progress back here on this pullback. And now we find ourselves in a pretty, uh, pretty suspect situation. We're under our daily 21 EMA, which is never good for the bulls. We are under the 50 SMA, which is never good for the bulls. We're firing a daily squeeze short. Um, and we're only two green dots in, so the rule of thumb of the squeeze, once it fires short, we're going to look for, you know, eight to ten bars of momentum. So in other words, there could be, uh, there could be quite the gas tank left here on that current daily squeeze. So that, of course, not good for the bulls, and then the, uh, the sell signal here from the big three indicator, never going to be a good thing for the bulls. So with that being said, there's a, there's a little bit of pressure here. We've broken structure, we've broken momentum. We went through a compression phase going into a squeeze. Now we're going into a brand new uh, expansion phase as we release that energy. So as far as trying to get a gist of, well, what does tomorrow's session bring? Now, are we going to rally back towards 4,000? Or are we going to head back down towards 3,940? A lot of times the clues for the following day, and a lot of times the clues for the current session, they're going to come from your lower time frames. So check a few things out here. If we drill down to an hourly chart, Heading into tomorrow's session, we're sitting here in an hourly squeeze. Now, as far as the structure goes, it's not all that bullish. Um, we're under the 200 SMA, we're under the 50, we're under the 21. So the structure is not all that bullish. Um, the indicator is not bullish. We're a little bit neutral. So for tomorrow and I think the rest of the week here, the question for me would be, does that squeeze fire short? Or can we turn the corner and see that squeeze fire to the upside? So what I'd like to do is... And if I'm trying to get a gauge of which way can that hourly squeeze fire, I'm going to go down to my lower time frames and look for clues. So that, of course, is where the big three heat map comes in handy. These are my buy and sell signals plotted on the background. So a quick glance here, we can see that there's no buy signals. All right, no green background. But instead, the 30-minute, the 15-minute, the 5-minute, and the 1-minute chart, they're all bearish. They're all printing that sell signal. So imagine we're taking the hourly squeeze and we're running it through an x-ray machine. Right, we're trying to get a good gauge of the health from uh, from the inside out. So heading into tomorrow, um, this would all kind of suggest, for now at least, it'd be a lot easier to see that squeeze fire short than to see that squeeze fire long. All right, it's all about what is going inside, uh, what is going on inside of that hourly squeeze. And of course, we're always gonna take context from our bigger time frames. So what's going on inside of that hourly squeeze is a 30-minute squeeze printing a sell signal inside of that 30-minute squeeze on the 15-minute chart we've got a sell signal and you take it down one more notch to a five-minute chart and you got a five-minute sell signal so in plain english your 30-minute chart your 15 your five minute your one hour inside of that hourly squeeze they're all lined up right now for the path of least resistance to be to the downside. In other words, they're going to be a negative influence on this hourly squeeze unless things can turn the corner and the bulls can clean it all up. So there's the bearish case. We've given back all the progress in the structure and momentum. We're taking out our trending moving averages. Now we're firing a daily squeeze short, printing a daily sell signal. All things that would typically suggest it's going to be a lot easier for the market to go lower. We've got a pretty clear level of support. And realistically, the only level of support left. And now our 30-minute, 15, 5-minute, 1-minute charts tell us the, the bears have got some pretty good control here. Doesn't mean the bulls don't have a chance. It's just a matter of can they clean up these problems and take control of the wheel. So for the bullish side of things, which uh, would require, I think, a little bit of patience, what I would look for tomorrow and over the next few days is instead of the squeeze here firing short, if we can get back above that key level of 4,000, close above 4,000, close back above the hourly 50 SMA, 
And then if our lower time frames can turn bullish, that might set the market up here for a pretty good pop. I get back above the key level, trap all the shorts, but then the confirmation of the push higher is going to come from a 5-minute, a 15-minute, a 30-minute chart going bullish. So it's a lot of, uh, you know, we're taking context from the top down, but we're looking for our triggers, we're looking for our, uh, our confirmation for trades from the ground up. So that is what I'm looking at for tomorrow, guys. A couple of bigger picture things here. The dollar, I'm not taking as big of a chill pill as I think you'd like to see if you are looking for the market to trade higher. So we are hanging out up here at the, uh, the plus one Keltner channel. Your daily squeeze did fire to the upside. We're bullish on the daily chart where I think we're going to learn a lot more about Dixie um, and as a result learn a lot more about the uh, future direction of the market. We'll be on the first back test of your 21 EMA. So the uh, the life and times here of the Dixie, the indicator is bearish. We go from bearish to neutral. As we go neutral, we rebuild a little bit of structure. Brand new daily squeeze. Indicator goes bullish. We fire to the upside. So finally, for the first time in a while, the dollar is moving and grooving. Right? Trend, structure, momentum, everything currently lined up for the path of this resistance to be to the upside here for this product. Where we get confirmation is on that first back test. If on that first back test to your 21 EMA, we find support, we stabilize, and we continue to trade higher, it's probably a further indication the market's going to head lower. If instead on the first back test, the dollar pretty much just throws in the towel, you know, we're taking out 104, we're taking out 103, we're losing that buy signal, we're getting sell signals. If all of that were to unfold, you'd probably see your market grind back to the upside. So as far as all that goes, it's uh, it's a little bit of hurry up and wait for now. One thing's for sure. I'm not getting any warning signs here as far as, uh, you know, here comes a huge flush in the dollar. Daily buy signal, 30 minute, 15 minute, 5 minute, 3 minute, even the 1 minute chart pumping out that green bean. So continue to keep an eye there on the Dixie. And then quick peek here at HYG. You got a pretty big level up here at 75. Um, so HYG breaks. Indicator goes bearish. Again, we're going to learn a lot here on this first bounce back to that falling 21 EMA. So say over the next few days or so, we grind a little bit higher. We smooch the moving average. But then from there, HYG turns the corner and rolls right back over. Expect for the market to do very much the same thing. If instead, over the course of the next few days here, maybe into next week, if you can get the junk bonds back above 75, 75, 50, with buy signals on lower time frames, that should bode well for the overall market. But as far as it all sits right now, guys, HYG has nothing but sell signals. The dollar, the dirty dollar, has nothing but buy signals and the old S&Ps, the spiders themselves, nothing but sell signals. So as always, guys, I appreciate you watching. Hope you found a little bit of this analysis helpful. And for those of you in the options room, I will see you tomorrow morning for the open. For the rest of you, feel free to check us out at SimpleTrading.com. If you haven't already, go on ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. And I look forward to talking to you guys in the next video. Adios. What's up traders? This is Taylor from Simpler Trading. I wanted to thank you for watching our video. And if you liked the video, go on ahead and comment down below, hit that like button, and make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon to get a notification anytime we upload our next video. And of course, if you want to watch us trade live in real time with our own money, check us out at simplertrading.com. Until then, trade safe, and I'll catch you in the next video.